So today we're going to be talking about how kidney stones apply in our patients who have idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Of course, I'm not a urologist and not an expert in stones. I'm only going to be talking about how this problem, kidney stones, affects us in the care of our patients with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So, as you know, our medicines, furosemide and acetylzolamide, Dimox, with Dimox being our number one. And so it's often a, a problem when we have a kidney stone because we're wondering, number one, can we give the, stone, uh, the Dimox in a patient with a kidney stone? And number two, which stone is it? And so in the large trials and the registries, the chance of having a stone is actually low. So it's probably less than 10%. So it's not a big problem, but it's not a nothing problem either. And we'd like to catch the stone if we can, because we'd like to know what the composition is. And there are some classic stones like the struvite stone that actually have nothing to do with the medicine. That was from, maybe from getting dehydrated. Um, and that's an infection stone, the UTI stone. And then we got the stones that matter to us, which is the calcium phosphate stone and the calcium oxalate stone. And for these sto two stones, you need to know a little bit about how the diuretics work. We'll do the easy one first, which is Dimox, acetylzolamide, which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. So in the proximal tubule, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, this CA, is in charge of H2CO3 into H2O and CO2. And these are good products to have because they don't have any charge and it's easy to get rid of these things. However, you block this, then you end up with too much of the ionic H plus and the HCO3 minus. And if you have too much HCO3 minus being delivered into the urine, you'll get urinary alkalosis. So it changes the pH alkalosis. So when you change the pH, you change solubility coefficient of calcium and phosphate, and that produces this calcium phosphate stone. And so it is the change in the pH hypocitrouria from carbonic anhydrase inhibition that causes the calcium phosphate stone in acetylzolamide. So when you have this H plus and HCO3, of course the H plus has to exchange with the sodium. And that enhances the distal delivery of the sodium, and you're going to have to have that come back in the distal system against potassium. And so the other side effect of the acetylzolamide is hypokalemia. So we get a hypokalemic metabolic acidosis from the urinary alkalosis from the carbonic anhydrase inhibition in the proximal system. The loop diuretic furosemide doesn't work like that. It works in the ascending a tubule, and so in the loop of Henle, the loop diuretic is blocking this sodium-potassium chloride exchange, and that's going to mean less potassium to go the opposite direction, and that means the passive movement created by the ionic gradient is not going to be present, and the calcium will stay in the urine. That will cause urinary hypercalciuria. So that hypercalciuria is the mechanism of the calcium oxalate stone in furosemide. So in furosemide, it's not a pH thing at all. It's not from carbonic anhydrase inhibition. It's from blockage of the sodium potassium chloride pump. It is hypercalciuria that causes it, and the treatment is eat less oxalate. And so you need to know what stone was caught. If it's struvite, drink water, treat the UTI, don't get dehydrated. That actually had nothing to do with you. If it's the acetylzolamide stone and the calcium phosphate, that one could have been us. And so we have to talk to urology about this. Sometimes we have to supplement the citrate to get the citraurea to go up. And you need to supplement the potassium if they're low, but usually Dimox you do not because it's such a weak diuretic. In furosemide, same problem, distal delivery of so sodium, resorption of sodium, dumping potassium, hypokalemia in both furosemide and acetylzolamide, but the stone is different, calcium oxalate stone in furosemide, because the mechanism is different. Instead of hyper, um, uh, instead of a change in the pH, it is hypercalciuria 
that causes that. And that means eat less oxalate.